Hey everyone, welcome back to the other side of weight loss. My guest today is Paul Fishman from paulfishman.love. L-O-V-E. I, I love it. <laughs> you're with this guy's a bone, and you're going to understand why he chose dot love instead of dot com. Paul, <laughs> Paul, Paul Fishman is a self love coach who is on a mission to empower and inspire humanity to love unconditionally. And to him, self love is the best medicine. So, welcome, Paul. Paul Fishman Thank dot love. For, <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. And you know, I do. I have to say that paulfishman.com was already taken, but it that's why I chose. It was meant love. to be. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. Uh, but I, I eventually want just all of the Paul Fishman dot, so they can all just like redirect to dot. I know. Love. Yes, I I changed my last name when I got married just mm -hmm. because my maiden name was taken. It was right at the same time I was building my business. And it was like everything I'd read was use your own name as your, as your business name. Right. But yeah. Karen styles, which was my maiden name was taken Karen styles.com. And I was so mad because I really didn't want to change my last name, but mm -hmm. Karen wasn't taken. So I changed it. It was all meant to be. It was all, all meant to be, to be right? Okay, yeah. so Mr. Self-Love Coach, um, yeah. you weren't always all about self-love, were you? <laughs> so you, you came to this for a reason. Yeah. Tell me I about did. it. Let's talk about it. I mean, there. I, I think that there's like three pillars of my life that were truly affected by my lack of self-love and compassion to myself. And that was really my physical body, my... Uh, my spiritual body and then my soul. So like the primary pieces of our life, right? They, I was really, really struggling um, at like the darkest place that I was. I was 75 pounds heavier than I am today. I was in an emotionally and verbally abusive relationship. And I was working a job that really wasn't like feel, feeding and aligned with me. So all of these things kind of were just stacking up on my shoulders and really weighing me down, literally and figuratively. And it turned into just this, this cycle of, of my, my classic cycle was people pleasing, emotionally eating, and then uh, I, going shopping to make myself feel better about the emotional eating, which then triggered the people pleasing again. And it was just like this constant cycle that I didn't know how to break. And long story short, the cycle was broken when I chose myself over everyone else. And of course, I fell back into the cycle multiple times, as we all do. Like, it's not just like a shoot right up to the top. It's like a you up, down, fall back, and go up, and you know, like that whole thing. So uh, I did not always put self-love at the center of my practice and really didn't know that that is what I was doing until almost 10 years after I, I looked back on my journey and was like, People were like, what did you do to lose the weight and align with your purpose and, and just create this beautiful business? And I was like, I have no idea. But then when I look back, it was like, oh, I said yes to me. <laughs> did, was there like a book that kind of set you off or listening to somebody or an aha moment in your life that kind of made you realize, holy, I've got to, I got to take better care of myself? I, I don't, I, I wasn't big into like podcasts or books or anything until recently. I think that it was just like me looking in the mirror and being like, wow, something has to change. And finally being able to like step into my body and feel intuitively what I needed. And that, so the catalyst for me was leaving the relationship that I was in. Mm -hmm. And after leaving that relationship, it kind of freed up the space for me to, to kind of get centered in who I was. And within that, I, in two weeks, 20 pounds of emotional weight fell off of me. No way. So oh, wow. yeah, it, it wow. just fell off of me and, and people started noticing. And I, I was like, honestly, I have no idea. Oh wait, no, I got out of this toxic relationship that was just making me feel so horrible about myself and stuck and lost and all of those other feelings. Yeah. People really don't, 
realize the impact that it has on our physical well-being. I mean, it, for you, it showed up as weight gain and I'm sure other things as well, but for some people, it might be like chronic back pain or knee pain or autoimmune condition. And there's such a significant tie between our emotions and our physical body and people put it on the back burner. They just don't think, they think it's woo woo. They think, well, how could this possibly have anything to do with how much weight I have, I am carrying on my body. And you're just a prime example, like 20 pounds in a couple of weeks is a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, give me that diet, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's called the self-love diet, Karen. I know, I love it. You have to ask. Uh, it, you know, it, it was a lot. And I don't, when, I don't think that that was, a, I didn't change any, I changed so much in that one action of saying, you know what, I matter most. Mm-hmm. And that's what I work with all of my clients in the end. Uh, and it's been really cool to experience that transformation within my clients as well when it comes to, uh, you can come into my programming with any sort of goal, as long as it's focused on this concept of I need to do me first. So I've had people come in with money issues, weight loss issues, career issues, goal, goals around relationship. And by using the tools and techniques that I subscribe and, and really teach, they're, they're able to just create such powerful momentum in their life. Do you think that many people love themselves? I think that deep down inside, we all want to love ourselves. I think that it's not something that you can just flip a switch and it's going to be a constant thing, right? Today, for instance, I uh, had a team member who just gave her notice and I was just like immediately because of all the training I've done, I said to myself, okay, this is okay. You know, like this, you're supporting her and this is her journey. This has nothing to do with you. But it was really, really hard to step into it and pull myself out because just as much as self-love is choose you first it's also choosing to honor everyone else right and that's why my mission is to empower and inspire humanity to love unconditionally it's not to empower and inspire humanity to love themselves unconditionally because the first step is self-love the first step is knowing that it has nothing to do with you what what everyone else is going through then and that in itself is going to help you show much so much more compassion to others and what they're going through right? We have have so much going on in this world right now. And so many people are just blaming others, pointing their fingers out at other people. And, and that has nothing, that is not self-loving at all. That is the complete opposite because self-love is just as much choosing you as it is being able to look in the mirror and own up to the fact that you can be better and you can change. Yeah, I think when when we hear the word self love, I mean, what it instantly comes to my mind is like looking in the mirror, going, "You look good. You're so awesome. You're amazing." Mm-hmm. But you're bringing it into a bigger context. Like you're, it's not just about like giving yourself a compliment and saying, "Hey, I love you." It's more about even being authentic, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly it, Karen. Because when people look in the mirror and say that stuff, like, do you actually truly believe it about yourself? Because it's one thing to say something, it's another thing to actually believe it. And and I think that we go through life, especially on social media, and we're liking and we're commenting on all these things. And and it's this like counterproductive sometime motion of going through life. You know, we're sending all this external validation to people, but we're not giving ourselves the opportunity to receive it from ourselves, which is the, the thing that is going to change humanity, is, yeah. is standing in your own light, knowing that you, the only person you need to be like is you, and that is beautiful, and that is powerful. Yeah, and social media has a terrible impact on that, of, tr- of mm-hmm. all of us trying to be something that we're not. And you see it every day on Facebook where you see people posting nothing but their perfect life, <laughs> you know? And it's like, are you really being you? <laughs> right. I don't think so. The, the, the double-edged sword with social media is that it's also the place that I feel I have the most impact. Me too. And, 
the most connection. So it's really about balancing that. What do, how do I step into social media? And actually someone, I was reading a post recently about this whole concept as if you're a leader in this, in the space that you, you work in or you just live in, you step in as a leader in social media. You're not there to do anything but lead. So I try to do my best of posting something with a comment, asking a question, and then I put my phone away. I allow everyone who is following and engaging with me to do that. And then I'll step in maybe a day later and read the comments and engage and and support, but it doesn't do me any service to sit and watch the likes. It doesn't do me any service yeah. to get heated by what others are saying. You know, I've been uh, I've been committed to stepping into having more conversations about outside of self love, and that puts that makes me vulnerable to receiving criticism. Right. And it's just been really important for me to to keep that in mind that I need to be a leader, and I'm not there to engage outside of my beautiful bubble that I've created on social media. Yes. <laughs> and in what other places in our lives can we put towards this idea of self-love? I mean, you talk about in some of your stuff, I've read that, you know, you see this underlying theme with a lot of people that you work with that are just feeling stuck mm -hmm. in life. And they're, they're not sure, they can't quite put their finger on what it is that it's that is missing in their life so can you tell us just kind of where else can self-love or lack of self-love i should say show up mm. uh, i find it in career a lot in relationship because when we so the thing that everyone lacks and the thing that i really struggle a lot with is gratitude yeah and here we are, right? For, I'm, I'm working on um, developing some corporate trainings for sort of bigger companies to go in and step in and support people through this concept of let's have gratitude that we actually have a job. You know, let's have gratitude that we're in a relationship, regardless of whether or not the relationship feeds our soul or regardless of whether or not the job is your dream job. Like, the gratitude needs to exist through every single thing that you do. And I struggle with this too all the time. Like there'll be times where I'm sitting and my husband will be like, Paul, what's going on with you right now? I think you need to be a little more grateful for what's go like what you're experiencing, you know, like instead of focusing on all of the people that aren't in your membership, focus on the people that are in your membership, like be grateful for mm -hmm. that. Like, when I launched my membership, I had this goal of launching to 20 people and I had five people join. And it was so painful for me, but then I was like, wait, five people joined, right? And, and now I'm going through another iteration of membership and, and recreating it. And I had seven people join my founder's membership. So, so they're like, we're so committed. We want to help you build this and we want to pay you to do it. So it's just like, there, you just celebrate all that stuff, get really excited. And I think that that's the one thing. Celebration is missing in our life a yeah. lot. Yeah, I agree. And it is very hard for us to sometimes look at what we need to be grateful for because we're so hardwired to look at negative and, and it's terrible. Why are we so hardwired to beat ourselves up and to look at the negative side of things? Do you know? <laughs> is it like uh, neurology? I don't know. <laughs> I Well, what comes to me is it's easier. It's easier to focus on the negative. It's And also just everyone's conditioned differently, right? And all mm -hmm. this thing happens very early on in childhood. And um, God bless all of our parents, but they're not, I haven't yet to meet a perfect parent because we're, we're all operating from ancestral stuff, like the stuff that my father and his father and his father's father passed down. And, and I've been actually doing some really cool work to clear that ancestral garbage that has been blocking me. But that takes dedication. It takes time. It takes the, the knowingness and the awareness and the noticing that this has nothing to do with me. So I, I, I like to think that, yes, there is neurological stuff and the answer is a lot more simple than we think. But it really comes down to 
we are so resistant to the things that we truly, truly want in life. We are the most resistant to them. And Karen, I'm finding out that what's happening as I do this work and receive more research working with all of these new clients is that we choose to suffer because we'd rather not put our dreams out there and go for them because we've already decided that we aren't worthy of them and we don't deserve them. So speaking on the other side of weight loss, you know, a lot of people who in your community are working towards a weight loss goal or have a weight loss goal and are doing their best to, to maintain it. And this takes strong, strong psychological com commitment because you're here and you're saying, I've done it and your body is going to want to go back to the way it was because um, this whole concept of being comfortable in the suffering it is a daily battle. I've, I've gone up and down, up and down, up and down. You know, I lost the 75 pounds and then I gained some of it back and then I lost it, it again and then I gained it again and I lost it again. And, it was a, and it's like, so how do we stick that middle ground? It's it's knowing that we deserve to, to finally be in that space. Yeah, let's talk about your journey a little bit with, you, with your diet. With um, I love what you put you that you used to eat cupcakes, hot dogs, <laughs> well, oh, and American cheese slices. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love it. I mean, and really, it was more so like the icing, the icing on the cupcakes. Like, yeah. <laughs> for some reason... For some reason, my mom always had a fun fetty cut like icing canister in our fridge, and it was just there for me. And the just like little like kind of like to get a, a little deep dive into who I was as a child. I always want need, knew that I needed support getting through this, and, but I was too scared to ask. And the times that I did ask. I was told no. So I was, I realized in later life that I just wasn't asking the right people, mm -hmm. but I would always like do little things. Like instead of using a spoon, I would just like scoop out the frosting. So I'd leave like my fingerprints in there, hoping that my parents would see and be like, Paul, did you do this? Like, do you need help? Like what's going on? Like how, how come you're eating icing for breakfast on a Saturday morning? Right. So I would always do little things with the hopes to get caught and and I think that that's like, if that story makes you think, huh, I do that too, then maybe you need to either ask support from someone or you're just ready to make the change now that you've noticed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you've, now you're like a fitness guy, right? Do you teach spin classes? I, I taught spin <laughs> okay. for uh, five years and I was a personal trainer and I was a nutrition coach and really on that journey really because when I first lost the weight, I was a student of spin and I was so terrified to gain the weight back that I thought the only way that I would be able to keep it off is if I started teaching spin. So here I was four years later teaching spin, maintaining the weight loss to the best of my ability. And I was burnt out. I was teaching 11 spin classes a week. Mm -hmm. I was training, I was training people and, and not feeling committed to my own self. This happens in the fitness industry a lot. Like you'll, you'll see like there are, there are people who are really into it and then you just get burnt out because you're giving so much. And then you look and you're just like, why does my spin instructor look like he's gained 20 pounds? Why is my spin instructor never actually on the bike? Like this is a thing that I have a feeling lots of people were thinking about towards the end of my time as a fitness instructor because I wasn't practicing what I preached and it, something had to change and it was my, me stepping away from that. Yeah. Yeah. And now you, you're a self-proclaimed plant-based eater, but yet you throw on a little protein here and there. And I love here that. <laughs> yeah. I it, love that you're just like to each his own. Like you have to find what's going to work for you. Well, that's self-love, you know, that, yeah. that's, um, that's, you know, and there's, I got a lot of uh, backlash from that article, a lot of um, vegan hate. I received a lot of vegan hate and it was a really interesting experience for me because I stepped out of it and I'm just like, what is your why behind tormenting someone who doesn't believe what you believe? Like 
do, don't you feel that maybe you would be more empowered and more just enlightened as a human to focus on yourself? You know, like one of my favorite quotes is worry less about what others think of you and more about what you think of others. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and, and that's just one of those really, really important things that I try to live my life in. And, and, and yes, yeah, so I believe that your body knows what it needs and wants. And right now I've been specifically just eating plants. Like I haven't had any animal protein for a few months and, and that's what my body is asking for me. And it takes, it takes a lot of noticing, a lot of sitting, a lot of thinking. And it also takes like breaking out of that emotional eating tendency, which a lot of us do as well. So there's the, I'm sure you discuss this a lot, intuitive eating. And, and mm-hmm. it's, it's something that I think now is just kind of like thrown around. Oh, I'm an intuitive eater, but like really what goes into that? Mm -hmm. And I think too, there's so many people, and I'm sure there's so many people listening to this right now who think the whole intuitive eating thing is just like, they're they're just so far removed from that. And they're so Mm -hmm. disconnected because they've been shown nothing but you know, external right. things as to how to lose the weight, right? We, we see on social media and it's try this diet and that diet and it's taking you out of your body when yeah. it's hard for us to learn how to get in. So talk to me about just some tools that somebody could use because I really think that self-love is one of the biggest missing pieces when it comes to somebody struggling to lose weight. And if you're not an intuitive eater and you'd like to, you know, be more in tune with eating, where's, where can somebody start with that? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think that it'd be great uh, time for me to share a a recent client story about this because I had, uh, so I have a program called the self love diet and it's a 12 week transformative course all around creating the life of your dreams. And, and the reason I call it the self love diet is because I'm trying my best to not only re restructure the concept of self love, but, but take away this concept that diet in itself is a bad word, a negative word. Diet really only means habitual nourishment. So what I'm doing is I'm teaching people how to habitually nourish the devotion to their individuality. So I had this guy come to me and his primary goal was to lose weight. And he had been on the yo-yo dieting and all this stuff. And, And I asked him, I said, so what are, what are some things that are coming up in your life? Like, why do you feel like this is a constant struggle? You know, and of course it was time and it was all these excuses that people throw out when they're really not willing to look deep within. And as frustrating as it sounds, I really sat down with him and I said, let's start taking pictures of the food that we're putting in our body. That's it. I just wanted to take pictures. And, and this is actually a, a powerful piece of my program Everyone goes through this regardless of whether or not they have a weight loss goal because it's important to know that the food that we're putting into our body directly impacts energetically how we're feeling. And more importantly, the thoughts that we're thinking when we're putting the food in our body impacts how our body uses the food. And this is just something that over time I've come to realize. Like, ask me for science, I can't give it to you. But ask me for real life, my life and all of my clients, I can definitely give you example after example after example. Because there's so much separation from mind, food, and body in the way that science and medicine and all this stuff goes into play. But it is not the case. So my first step would be to... Just take pictures of your food because by taking a picture of a food, you have to take a pause and you have to look at what you're going to put in your body. And I get like so much resistant about this part of the the course. And, and it's really, really fun for me to support people through that. The, oh, I just forget to take pictures of my food. Okay. Well, let's notice that you're choosing to forget because it's a (laughs) choice, you know, and let's move through it. So this is the fun part about being a coach in this space because I love supporting people. So back to my client, he, he started taking pictures and he realized that when he was eating, he wasn't actually hungry. He was just doing it because he was bored or he was stressed out or all the other things. And also he realized that all of the things he was putting in my, her, his body were just like the beautiful color of like 
yellow orange fried you know like that beautiful fried food color and i was like let's get some other colors in the, the the rainbow of your diet like green you know and and some rich rich hues of like deep purple and like all these things that and over time you take these pictures and you get to see so there are lots of photo food journaling apps out there that are great um i love the it's one called eight it's free ate and um and that's the one that i use with all of my clients and it it's 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 the first step, just looking at the choices you're making in the eye and saying, I'm making this decision. No one's forcing me, you to make this decision. You know, like you're deciding to eat what you eat and that's on you. And that's another aspect of self-love, taking complete ownership of right. your life. Yes, 100%. Yeah, how does self-love affect our food choices? Mm. Well, it comes comes down to the whole concept of if you don't love yourself, it's going to be completely direct, uh, directly related to the food you're putting in your body, right? If And I'm not saying that choosing a salad means self-love because sometimes our body doesn't want a salad, right? There, This morning, after I got that news about the um, the girl that is, uh, you know, moving on to another opportunity, I... Uh, immediately like felt really just like uh, floating up in the air right and I needed grounding and I was like I need some carbs right and I didn't have I was driving so I didn't have the opportunity to just like eat something right away but it's just like I sat with myself and I was like Paul is that really what you want do you really want carbs or what about a salad are you interested in eating a salad right now or what about like some like half an avocado or something like what do you really really want right now and I was like I had a good 15 minutes to just like sit with myself and there's these other internal cues where your your body, your mouth will start salivating when you connect with the food that you truly, truly want to need. And this is going to be one of those like, <gasps> aha moments for a lot of people listening. They're just like, oh yeah, I've been going through this thing where like, I don't necessarily, I used to be a, like a major sweet tooth and I've been doing this heavy metal detox and I've just like lost my sweet tooth in its entirety. And I'll be sitting in front of like something sweet and I'll just be like, I don't really want that. I don't want it. And then I won't eat it. And I think that a lot of us don't create, give ourselves permission to take the time to ask ourselves if we truly want it. Yeah. And if there's something else, like I love that, like just ask yourself, go through the different foods in your head and be like, okay, what am I really after mm -hmm. here right now what does my body need because yeah. we tend to just eat the same things day in and day out and it's like maybe your body needs something else some nutrient that it's missing and you could just ask yourself and wait to see if you salivate right like i love that yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah amazing so tell us about your membership that you have because i think that sounds yeah. awesome yeah so uh, i have a membership and it's called self-love on demand and the concept behind self-love on demand is you have the opportunity to go in and do it on your own time with a community that's, that's there to support you. And within the membership, I have workshops specifically around this concept of self-love, but with, with different pain points that people go to. So we talk about morning routine. We talk about gratitude. We talk about uh, career. We talk about money, all with this concept of choosing you first. And, and I love like uh, just creating open conversation. I also, if you are in a space where you really want to be a part of like a group coaching program or work with me one-on-one, -on -one, but financially it doesn't work out, I give you the opportunity to join the membership at a lower price point and you can apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with me with the caveat of knowing that everyone in the membership gets permission to join live and watch. So like there's these things that that I would, my mission, because it's to empower and inspire humanity to love unconditionally, I know that membership is the way for me to do that because not everyone can sit down and, and give me a, a, a major financial investment to work with me in a, a small group or a one-on-one -on -one setting. And I understand that, but that doesn't mean that everyone needs to not work with me. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then I have like Q&A calls. And right now I am going through like, 
uh, I have like a success path. So when you join me, it's not just like you're thrown to the wolves. Like it's a, it's a complete opportunity to go through and kind of like a choose your own adventure with guidance from me. And that's the cool thing about membership too, is it's always changing. It's ever growing. And, and I love the community aspect. So we have a secret Facebook group and I have an amazing community manager who's always just like asking questions to get people to think outside of the box when it comes to, Oh, what, 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 how can I consider this differently? Or so I love it. It's, it's the most rewarding thing that I do because I can support a lot more people. And, um, my group coach, I would think coaching. it would just benefit anyone like it did even for the real positive people out there like myself yeah. i just think that being part of that kind of community of like just positive and support and how to just live the best life possible mm -hmm. right and how to be more you more authentically mm -hmm. you yeah. every day that would right. help everyone in every area of their life truly mm-hmm Truly, I have like a, a meditation corner with a lot of people come to me and they, they just lack self-confidence in choosing mm -hmm. them. So that's a primary focus in the group, like how to develop confidence in choosing yourself and saying yes to yourself. So that's, yeah. that's what I'm doing. Awesome. <laughs> Do you mind if we pause? My, my puppy has decided to jump in. Just... All right. Well, paulfishman.love. You can't forget that, but the link yeah. will be in the show notes and um, I'll actually put the link to the actual membership too, because I just want to encourage everybody to check it out because it sounds yeah. like it's awesome. It's awesome. And like I said, every, it's something everybody could use. And I know in my own journey uh, to discover what my body needed to lose weight. And I always talk about this in every podcast that I'm interviewed for is my, the, one of the biggest things I did was deal with my lack of self-love because I didn't have any and I abused my body physically, mentally, emotionally, all of that for so long. Yeah. And I had to deal with that and it took a long time and it's not, it's not fun shit to look at. Is it Paul? Sometimes no, no, it's not, it is not. And it, but it's really powerful stuff to look at. It's, yeah. It's, it's super powerful. Yeah. Life changing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, because I don't think you and I would be here today had we not. We wouldn't be. If we hadn't looked at that, if we hadn't decided to, to choose us first and to love ourselves, we wouldn't be where we are right now. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.